<laughs> well, we'll speak for Hans here and show the point. Rook takes c5. This is a classic back rank combination with mate. Nice. Now, the reason you couldn't do this with the rook is because white's queen drops back and takes black's rook, defending the other rook. But here, if you take the rook, black plays queen takes e1. If you take the queen, same concept, white drops b2. And this is completely hopeless. The premier speed chess event of the year has arrived. The opponent's heads, right? They're always this whole... Uh... Uh, cheating allegations from the past. You know, they're always <laughs> can get in, inside your head. So it's uh, indeed important for Hans to start well and make uh, Maxim question reality. And here we go. Uh, the gong has sounded. We're underway. Maxim has the white pieces in the first game. A Rui Lopez, not particularly surprising. Hans, he likes the Karokan. Uh, that's been his choice against me in, in our 3 plus 0 matches. Uh, but he does a lot of opening work and he's got a lot of weapons up his sleeve. A2, A4. Uh, an anti martial uh, and he's obviously a very popular line, and now black has uh, is at a crossroads between b4, bishop b7, and rook b8, I believe, are the three big options. Yeah, exactly. Bishop b7, that's also what Hans did against Vidit in the Grand Suisse. So I think Hans plays this um, martial is one of uh, reliable openings in his repertoire. Uh, he's played it uh, in some important games. I also remember some US championships and so on. So uh, no surprise there from uh, from Hans. Maxim is also a big uh, specialist of the Spanish. Maxim has played this position on, on the white side many times. And so uh, mm -hmm. kind of a principled opening duel here um, between these two players. Now, sometimes the knight goes to c3. Um, and often the destination is the same. Uh, often the destination ends up being g3. But uh, you can go through several different airports. Uh, knight bd2 is the traditional way to play. Knight a5, preparing queenside expansion with c7, c5. So far, pretty standard uh, treatment of the opening by both sides. Uh, I'm sure still within theoretical waters. And each, sometimes I see this bishop c8, bishop e6 maneuver. I'm, I'm never totally sure how to handle this position with black. Yeah, there, there are two ways of doing, dealing with a bishop on b7. You can either activate it with a d5 break at some point and then make mm -hmm. the bishop shine on the diagonal. Or you can indeed, like you mentioned, reroute the bishop back to c8 and e6. And in this particular position, this is a, the second player is more, uh, yeah, it's more intuitive. And that's also what Hans goes for. Mm -hmm. Displaying a good understanding of the position. Now, bishop d2 is Maxime preparing c3. First, he starts with knight to e3, obviously also a viable spot for the knight, uh, gripping some of these important light squares. And now a bishop trade is on the horizon. Yes, a trade on e6 will solve Black's issue of the weak light squares, uh, but of course the long-term weak pawn on e6 could prove um, an issue. Uh, big, big uh, moment for Maxim. He's got lots of options. Uh, he can place a piece on d5. Oh, this allows b3, very, very important uh, moment, because this could bury the bishop on b1 and the rook on a1 as well. So c3 is a move I wouldn't have made uh, so quickly. A very risky decision by Maxim. Let me quickly show people what the stakes are in this position for white. If black plays b3 and Hans is still thinking, um, white will have to drop the bishop, and Hans just played b3. Now let's say black plays a move like rook b8. If white pushes d4, or maybe queen c7 is a smarter move, d4, c4, and just take a moment to appreciate, folks, uh, that this bishop and this rook are essentially never getting out. You're just like playing without a queen side unless you sacrifice a pawn with a drastic move like knight d5. Queen c7 is on the board, Anish. Uh, yes, I suspect. Indeed, I suspect uh, c4 is an idea to go bishop uh, to c3 or even take knight, knight d2, try to win the. Oh, wow. He goes for what it. you mentioned. Yeah, this d4 and then knight d5. Yeah, that, that's a, an idea, but black could even think to ignore that. You know, a move like. Oh, it's hard. Yeah, e5 pawn is falling. I was about to just queen d8, but then e5 pawn might be falling. I don't know, but knight d5, okay, I can also just take it. And. Um, your bishop will come to life, but the rook still is on a1, and I could exploit the d-file uh, if it opens with black. Knight to f5 instead. I mean, he's obviously hoping that after the trade, this white bishop will have a small escape window on e4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, strategically, uh, this play by white is, uh, <sighs> is very risky. Uh, you're really going all in on the kingside initiative, but you risk to end up playing without two pieces, a rook and a bishop. Very, very risky decision by Maxim, and he takes it so uh, lightly. I'm quite uh, quite surprised by that. Um, I'm sure in a classical game, he would think more than twice about it. But in a blitz game, he thinks, OK, let's just do it and see what happens. Yeah, he's like a pilot during a thunderstorm. You're, the plane is shaking, you know, the coffee's spilling, the passengers are screaming, and, you know, it's just another day at the office. But 
Um, Maxime has to keep the plane stable here. Rook eight to d8, criticized by the computer, but the computer criticizes everything. It hates all that is beautiful in life. Um, Hans keeping the tension, Maxime doing so as well. So white refusing to take on e7. I mean, technically white could have taken a pawn, but that didn't seem appealing at all because the bishop would have stayed buried on b1. But now he does. Now he does. Uh, he, he he takes on e7, but he, he's not going to be able to win the pawn on e5, right? Like he'll probably take with rook, but then bishop g5. But even ah. that, you know, it's not so clear. You do have to checkmate me there. And if you don't, <laughs> at the end of the day, I mean, you'll start attacking with the three pieces you have left, but the other two are in the corner, and I will have more pieces in defense than you have in the attack. So I'm not uh, I'm not so thrilled with white's position. Even rook e7, bishop g5, h6, bishop f6, gf, and just go for yeah, it. And how see. are you? How can white be better when you're playing without these two pieces and there's no? obvious roadmap for getting them out of the gate. Now, Hans is taking a while. I would have honestly taken to the rook quickly. Is there some tactic there that that is called? I mean, bishop g5, bishop f6, I guess, is scarier if you're actually sitting at the board. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, I sort of said that it could not work. It could also, it could also work. Yeah. How do, how do I know? I'm just sort <laughs> of easy, easy. It's easy to expose other people's king. Yeah. When it's yours, it's a different story. So I understand Maxim's hesitation as well. Oh, I sadly, I find it all too easy to expose my own as well. Um, I've learned that lesson one too many times. Now, queen takes e7 is a positional pawn sacrifice, uh, but the upside is that, and he does play queen e7. Now, wow. I think Maxime has to take on e5. Yes, but at this moment, Ooh. oh, bishop g4, wow, wow, nice resource. Uh, now, black is trying to explore, exploit the fact that white is temporarily uh, has his rook on a1 out of play, because the rook will eventually get into play, but temporarily it's out, so black is trying to be very quick here. And this knight on a5 is really the engine of black's entire construction, just sitting there in the corner, you know, chilling with a pina colada and burying white's entire queen side. If you play queen takes g4, people, black will play rook takes d2. Then the b2 pawn will be hanging. Is white in trouble? I mean, clearly Maxi missed bishop g4. That came out of nowhere. And if you play h3, Anish, knight e5, this is looking ominous for Maxime. Yes and no. Um... Uh, of, of course, uh, the rook on a1, yeah, as we mentioned it many times, but you are up a pawn, and if at some point you get f4, e5 rolling, you activate the b1 bishop, you activate the a1 rook, you'll be doing great. So white's position has potential, um, but currently, yeah, currently there are some difficult questions to answer, like what is your next move? <laughs> yeah, yeah, starting with what do you do now? Because f4, <laughs> queen, c5 check is... A non-starter. Um, if you can push this knight away, f4 becomes a serious possibility. He plays queen takes g4. Okay, maybe e5 after rook takes d2. Because the priority is getting this bishop out hey, of the, prison. Uh -huh, so the b pawn is being sacrificed. Wow. Right? You're not supposed like, to take it. Why? Oh, e6, queen h5, something like that. But it's not obvious. Oh, this knight on a5, I, I sung its praises just a second ago. It's, it's undefended. I think taking on b2 is tempting. I don't. I think Hans will do that. Um, I don't smells expect. Smells a rat. Queen c5, uh -huh, hitting the pawn. Makes sense. Makes sense too. He, he wants to first uh, activate the queen, secure the knight on a5 somewhat, and then take on b2 next after queen f4. But the issue for Black is queen f4, rook takes b2. That rook is sort of trapped on b2, which is not sort of. imminently dangerous. I mean, you don't have queen c1. You relinquish the f2 pawn, but it's a little bit scary. Maybe bishop f5 and e6 there. White could take over the initiative pretty quickly. Yes, white will uh, have the active rooks. Bishop will come out. Rook from a1 will go, go to d1. White will have more pieces in the attack briefly. But of course, uh, long term, the b3 pawn is there. So if we imagine any rook end game, then white's already doomed in those rook end games. Maxim goes for queen h4, which is attacking the h7 pawn um, as well as defending the f2 pawn. But at the g6, the question is again, uh, how do you proceed? The e5 pawn hangs and the b2 pawn hangs. Mm -hmm. So probably his last move was just not accurate. He just lost him time. He's just losing a tempo. Yeah, you're, you're right. Rook takes e5 is now a huge threat. This pawn was really the source of your counterplay. He might have to play queen f4, but then black has rook takes e5. Tactic? No, no, he doesn't. Queen takes d2. But just okay, rook b2, so... now, now black won a tempo compared to the line before. He got g6 uh -huh. for free. And, and white doesn't is... have bishop f5. Queen, queen, e, queen, e, queen, e five, queen, e, queen, e five. Oh, queen, e wow. five. That's a, by that's, the way, that's a, that's a, that's a game. I see. Let's see if, I, oh yeah. And he yeah, finds yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's over. 
No, this is uh, yeah. Wow, <laughs> look at that.